So let's talk about boning for a second. Um, there are three types of boning. You have a uh, plastic boning, which I have a whole bag of right here. Um, you have different kinds of plastic boning. You can even potentially use zip ties uh, or cable ties for um, plastic boning. I have I bought this from like a theater a couple years ago, so I just got it as a whole bag. Um, yeah, so that's plastic boning. And I also have some flat steel in here, but let's ignore that. Then we have flat steel boning. This comes in different sizes. Um, for my bodices, I use the seven millimeters wide uh, flat steel boning. Um, and you can also um, use this for crinolines and stuff. In that case, I use the um, 11 millimeters wide flat steel. And this is very strong and helps the bodice keep shape very well. And then we have spiral steel boning. Um, this is what I use the most in bodices, as you'll see um, in a second. Um, this is very flexible. It helps um, curve with the body really well. So yeah, I use all of these in my bodices. Um, I use pl um, plastic boning in my modesty panel because that doesn't need to keep shape too well. And I think it's a shame uh, to use flat steel or spiral steel in my modesty panels because these are not cheap. Um, so yeah, I use plastic for my modesty panel. Then for uh, the center front bone, as well as the um, eyelets around the back, I use my flat steel because those need to keep their shape really well and those need to like stand up straight. So flat steel for those. And for all of the other boning channels, I use spiral steel. So again, this is what I use the most. Now you can also, um, I know that in some countries, boning is really, really hard to get by, uh, steel boning. Um, so I know a lot of people like to use just plastic boning or zip ties for their entire bodice. I happen to be very lucky and live in a country where boning is not really too expensive and I can just purchase it easily. So that's why I use um, regular steel boning. I also just highly prefer steel boning over plastic boning because this doesn't really help keep shape well. It moves all over. So yeah, I prefer using steel, but again, there are um, some countries where steel boning is very hard to get by. So it's perfectly normal to use plastic boning as well. And I would love to help everyone out uh, where you can purchase uh, boning. I always get this question when I um, when I post a video that has boning in it, like, oh, where can I get boning? Um, I live in the Netherlands and I know where I can get boning in the Netherlands, um, but I don't know where you can buy boning in any other country in the world. So I will put the link where I buy my boning here in the Netherlands. But besides that, unfortunately, I can't help you out with where in your country you can get boning. So you can just Google like steel boning or plastic boning, um, coarse tree boning, something like that, spiral steel, flat steel boning, and and um, yeah, maybe you'll find it that way, but that's as much of a help I can be when it comes to that. So yeah, let's cut all of this and add it to the bodice. There is actually some more stuff I need to explain when it comes to cutting boning. Um, and that's all of these. Um, I got these, like, I don't know exactly what they're called, but they are these industrial... Um, it's an industrial tool that helps you cut uh, metal or steel. And I always use these to cut my boning with. The cutting boning is very hard, but I found that with these it gets a little bit easier. Still, I absolutely hate having to cut boning because it's so rough on my hands. And especially the steel boning is really hard to cut through. Um, but yeah, these help a lot. So maybe just look for some like metal clippers or whatever. I don't know what these are called, but this is what they look like. Um, and they're a big help. And then when I cut my boning, I wear these protective uh, gloves that I got. Um, I used to cut my hands open all the time when trying to insert boning and cut boning. And I have um, found that when I wear these, suddenly my hands can like cut it more easy. Maybe I'm less scared of hurting myself or something. So yeah, I um, recommend getting a pair of protective gloves. Because um, some of the edges of the bones are very sharp as well. So yeah, these help. 
And then I have these um, that I use to file down the um, very sharp edges of the boning. So um, yeah, I do that after I cut them. Watch me endlessly struggle to cut this boning. For finishing the edges of my boning, I can never manage to get those boning end caps in place, no matter how hard I've tried. So instead I file down the sharp edges really well and put a layer of duct tape on it. And honestly, I've never had a bone work its way out of a channel before. And I've made a lot of bone bodices over the years, so I feel like this duct tape technique works quite well. Once the boning is all inserted, I close off the tops of the boning channels by stitching straight across the top of the channel. When you do this, you have to be careful not to sew on a bone and break your needle though. The bodice is coming together more and more. Here I am lining up the fashion layer with the strength layer. I do this by first lining up all of the seams with each other and pinning very carefully along the edge. If you stitched everything together properly on your marked seam allowance, the layer should fit together perfectly. Once the layers are pinned, I baste them together along the top and bottom edge with basting thread. Make sure you don't make your stitches too large, because we need these layers to stay together very well. I'm gonna do the exact same for the lining on the inside of the bodice. First remove any leftover basting thread on the strength layer. Then line up your lining the same way you did with the fashion layer. And then pin and baste again. Okay, after basting the strength layer and the lining to the fashion layer of the fabric, this is what we have going on right now. Um, the tops and bottoms look like a bit of a mess because all of the basting thread, um, but all of that is going to be taken out later. Uh, just to be sure, I leave it all in for now until I stitch the piping or the binding onto this and then I'm sure that it's all really secure. And then I take all of this uh, basting thread out. But for now we're just going to leave it like this. And then on the inside, this is what we have going on. Uh, as you can see the lining is in and under here, under the lining is the strength layer with the um, boning channels in it. The boning is in, so we're getting quite far now. 
And now I will be working on the facing flaps that I talked about before. Um, so as you can see, this is still the loose center back piece and that is going to be pressed in this direction which i will show in a second and then uh, this is going to be stitched down by hand so we're going to stitch the um, boning channels of the center back in here um, and make place for the eyelets and yeah then again this is going to be um, hand sewed down and then we have some really nice facing flaps so yeah this is what it looks like right now and I'm going to be working on those. I just finished the facing flap on one side of the bodice while my camera was charging. So you can kind of see what we're going to be doing right now and why we needed that extra piece of center back. So from the front it looks like this. You can see here where the boning is inside on two sides of the eyelets. Uh, the row of eyelets and then um, on the inside it looks like this. So it's neatly finished by hand here, this is the inside of the eyelets and it just gives a really nice finish to the bodice on the inside. Start off making my facing pieces by pressing it back really well. This helps a lot while sewing the boning channels in place. Here I am stitching the boning channels in place. I will explain how I space these in a little bit. Okay, so you just saw me stitch the uh, boning channels into the back. Um, so I wanted to talk about my spacing for these for a bit. Um, so the first one is stitched down right on the edge here where the um, facing flap is folded backwards. Um, then the second row uh, makes the boning channel whole, which is one centimeter away from the other one. Uh, my bones are seven millimeters, so the one centimeter uh, leaves enough room to uh, wiggle the bone in here. Um, then this is the gap for the eyelets, and I used to make that one one centimeter as well, but that left a very small space for my eyelets to go. Um, and then I tried doing one and a half centimeters of space in between, but that was too much. And then it looked like there was a lot of room between here for the eyelets. So that looked a bit weird. So now I do a very precise 1.2 or 1.3 um, centimeters in between here. And that is just enough space for the eyelets to sit nicely. Um, as you can see right here on the other side, it's not too narrow, but there's also not too much room in between. So yeah, that's why I do 1.2 or 1.3 centimeters in between here. And I mark that with one of these like water markers. Uh, it's not focusing, but it's by the brand Prim. Um, and these dissolve when you put water on them. So I use those for marking a lot. So yeah, I mark these with it. And then the last one is one centimeter away from that other line again. And this makes the second boning channel. So yeah, that's what we do. And then on the other side here, you can see them as well. And now we will be um, putting our eyelets, uh, eyelet markings on here. And after I've done that, I'm going to be explaining something about my eyelet spacing as well. So I will be right back with more explanations. <laughs> okay, uh, so I just made my markings for my eyelets on the other side. And for this, I used the eyelets I already placed right here. Um, and the way I space my eyelets is um, at the waist right here. Um, I always use, uh, if my, my bodice goes beyond the waist, um, I always do bunny ear lacing, which I will show how I do that at the end of this video, probably. Um, but in order to do that, I space some eyelets at the waist closer together. Now, you can do only two, but I have a few historical um, 
corsetry books, um, like corsets and crinolines, um, that show that there are four eyelets one centimeter apart at the waist. So that's what I kind of started doing. But again, you can also do only two close together, but I do four. Um, so yeah, at the waist I have four that are one centimeter apart and then after those four I space them at two centimeters apart. Uh, having them one centimeter together is like way too many eyelets, you don't need that many. But I found that if you space them further apart than two centimeters, it's two little eyelets. So yeah, two centimeters apart for me is perfect. And then um, um, four that are one centimeter apart right here at the waist. So you can see how I marked them here. Um, and now I am going to be inserting the eyelets. And I put a link in the description where I buy my eyelets. Now that the channels are stitched into place and the eyelets are marked, I'm using a hole puncher to make the holes for my eyelets. I use the largest hole, which is the 4.5mm one. The link to where I buy my eyelets is in the description of this video. There are several different tools you can use for setting your eyelets. I've tried several and I prefer the hammer tool I'm using right here. You can buy this in the same listing as the eyelets that I linked. I inserted my flat steel boning into the boning channels around the eyelets. I prefer inserting the boning after setting the eyelets because setting the eyelets and punching the holes is a lot easier without the boning in the channels. After that I cut my facing flap to an even length. Once it's even all over, I tuck the raw edge under with about 1cm and pin it in place. This edge will be hand sewed down with a slip stitch. Now I'm going to cut the bias strips for the piping and the bias binding. 
I fold my fabric at a 45 degree angle. This is where the bias of the fabric is. Piping and bias tape is cut on the bias because this is the grain line with the most stretch. This stretch will help the binding and piping to curve along the bodice nicely. To determine how long I need my strips to be, I measure whatever I need to bind and add about 3 cm to each side. For the width of the strips I do at least 5 cm. Especially for the piping you need enough seam allowance left over to finish the edges. 5 cm is usually safe, but you can also do a bit more. I make my piping by getting some satin cord and wrapping the fabric around that cord, so the cord sits right against the fold. Make sure the right side of the fabric that you want to have on show is facing the outside. Change your presser foot to a zipper presser foot and sew down right along the edge of the cord you put inside the fabric. There are also special piping presser foots, but I don't own one of those and the zipper presser foot works just as well. When the piping is finished, I'm going to pin it to my bodice. This is where the 1 cm seam allowance comes into play. Pin the piping with the piped edge towards the inside of the bodice. Do the pinning right where your seam allowance begins. If you do it correct, the piping tapes as well as the seam allowance of the bodice are sticking out of the bodice at the top and the bottom. Next, you're going to sew the piping to the bodice. For this, I use my zipper pressure foot again and sew right on top of that first row of stitching I made to make my piping. Okay, as you can see, I just sewed all of the piping on everywhere. Um, at least everywhere that I'm going to need piping, because the arms, eyes, I'm going to um, bind in some more tapes, as you'll see me do in a second. But yeah, all of the piping is stitched on now. And as you can see, uh, the piping goes to the inside of the bodice, as I explained. Um, and what we're going to do right now is... Um, so you have the in the like the bodice fabric right here and then you have two pieces of binding tape um in the end for uh, finishing it you only need the very outer uh layer of the piping so this one uh, that i'm holding right now so the inner one this one as well as all of the leftover fabric right here from the bodice um, you're going to cut away um, let me show you on the inside so right here you can see my stitch line from attaching the piping so I'm going to be cutting it like right here leaving maybe five millimeters um, over there um, and you're going to cut all of that out of the bodice and um, this layer of piping. So you only, like I said, have the outermost la layer here. Because um, after that we're going to be pressing... Let me show you from the outside again. We're going to be pressing the piping in this direction so it like stands up. And we're going to finish that by hand on the inside. Um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I will show you again how I cut it after I did so. And I'm also going to be removing some of this basting everywhere. I press my piping back so that it stands up straight from the front and all of the leftover piping tape and the seam allowance folds to the inside of the bodice. If you're working with a very thick fabric, this can be quite a challenge and pressing well is very important. Thank you. 
Okay, so here you can see how much fabric I cut away and that I kept. And then here's the outside piece of the piping. And uh, now, uh, as you could just see, I pressed all of this backwards so it, it lays nice and flat. Um, and then I'm going to tuck this edge under like this and pin it and hand sew it down so it's all nice and finished. And then from the front, the piping will stand up really nicely like this. As I already mentioned previously, I am tucking the leftover piping tape under itself and hand sewing everything down with tiny slip stitches. I lost the footage of me sewing the arms eye binding on, but I sewed it down one centimeter away from the edge of the arms eye. Now I'm pressing it back to make sure it folds inside the bodice nicely. On the inside of the bodice, I tuck my binding under itself again and hand sew that edge down with a slip stitch. The edges of the binding are tucked to the inside of the bodice and folded under itself. The last thing to do for this bodice is making the modesty panel. I start off with lining up my two modesty panel pieces with the right sides together and pinning along my marked line. I stitch down along the edge, but leave open a gap of about 8 cm at the bottom. Once everything is sewed down, I clip the edges of the modesty panel so there isn't any bulk at them. Then the whole modesty panel is turned inside out through that gap you left open. I use my corner and edge shaping tool to make the edges look neat. The 
whole modesty panel is given a good press. I also carefully press the hole that has been left open so the edges fit on top of each other nicely. Now we're going to stitch the boning channels into the modesty panel. I always do three boning channels, but you can also do two or even more than three if you like. I make my boning channels one centimeter wide. The middle channel of the three has the center back baseline going right through the center. The other two channels are stitched in place one centimeter away from that first channel you made. I use plastic boning in my modesty panel because I think it's a waste to use steel. I do always press the modesty panel with my iron again after adding the plastic boning because this will make the plastic bones lay a bit more nice and flat. Once the boning is in you can close off the gap you left open by machine or by hand. The modesty panel is pinned to the edge of the facing piece on the inside of the bodice. Then I hand sew it to the facing with double thread and using a whip stitch. Okay, I quickly wanted to show everyone something about uh, how I sew the modesty panel to the bodice. So as you can see, I lined up the waistline marking on my modesty panel with the one on my bodice. Um, and now we're going to sew it down. And I already pinned it in place. And what you're going to do is um, you're going to sew it to basically this seam right here or edge of the facing. Because this, this um, is quite thick and so is the edge of the modesty panel. So you get this edge right here. If I do this you can see it. This right here. And I'm just going to go around that with thread. And I use a double sewing thread. I already threaded my sewing machine. As you can see the thread is doubled so it's extra strong. Um... And yeah, I'm just going to do small stitches and go around this thick piece right here, um, like this, to sew it all down. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that right now.
Okay, so as you can see, the modesty panel is now attached to the inside of the bodice right here. I always attach it on the right side. That's just what I do. I don't know, maybe you can attach it to the left side if you want that. Um, and some people like to put either eyelets or like little um, loops right here on the modesty panel to put the lacing through. I never really do that. I feel like it's not necessary because it's already attached really well. And I just, when you wear it closed like this, uh, I just shove the modesty panel away under the um, other side of the bodice. But yeah, if you want to do that, you can put some eyelets in the modesty panel or like some loops or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's it really. Uh, I'm going to remove some of or all of the leftover basting thread here inside the bodice and on the outside. Um, and yeah, if you um, want to make just a bodice without any sleeves or anything on it, uh, this is basically finished now. Um, of course, I'm going to be attaching the cape sleeves right here. Um, I know some people would like to see that, but I'm not going to show you, unfortunately, because I really need to get this commission finished and um, filming all of this takes me quite a while. Um, and this video is already going to be really, really long, so I'm sorry, but I'm not going to show how I do the cape sleeves. Um, but yeah, I will insert some final footage right here. And I'm also uh, lastly going to be showing how I lace my bodices. So yeah, uh, if you don't do the cape sleeves or any other sleeves, then this is it really. Um, maybe if you make a bodice, you just have the piping along the neckline or just have binding along the neckline. Maybe you did it like this. Um, but yeah, this is really it and I'm very happy with how it turned out both on the outside and on the inside um, And if you use my tutorial to um, Make your own bodice then I would love to see do tag me in them or do send me pictures or whatever on Instagram um, and yeah, I hope this was helpful to you and um, in the future I also want to make a video about making a bone bodice when you actually see the boning channels on the outside. Um, when they're like stitched into it like the eyelets uh, or the boning channels in the back are. So yeah, that will definitely come in the future. Probably not for a couple like weeks or months at least. Um, and I also have another video up on my channel about making an 1860s corset where I show how you make a corset when there's actual like boning channels laying on top of the corset rather than having them stitched in um, or invisible like in this case. So you can go ahead and watch that as well. It's quite an old video though. It's not the best and I also changed some techniques from that video but it might still be helpful. Yeah, like I said, I hope this video was helpful as well. And please, if you use any of this for your own bodices or corsets, do send it to me because I would love to see. Most of the lacing is very easy to do. I start off at the top, making sure the middle of the lacing sits right at the top of the center back. I put my lacing into the eyelets going from the top to the bottom, then going to the other side and going in from the top and out of the bottom again. For lacing, I always use either ribbon or satin cord. I know some people are scared to use these as lacing, but as long as you don't tight lace your bodice like crazy, these should be fine. I've never had a lace rip and I've been making bone bodices for years. When you get to the four eyelets at the waist, you're going to do the top one of the four as normal, going in from the top and out from the bottom of the bodice. Then you're going to skip one eyelet and move on to the one below it. Go into this eyelet from the bottom of the bodice rather than the top. This way the lacing comes out at the top of the bodice. Then at the same side go up into that eyelet you just skipped from the top going to the bottom. This creates a loop in the lacing. You can also put this video on less speed and really look at what I'm doing with my hands. That might make it a bit more clear. Do this with the loops on both sides. 
they are going to continue as normal at the next unlaced eyelet. You're just gonna go in from the top and going to the bottom again. Make sure you leave lacing at the loops of at least like 20 centimeters. This is for tightening and tying the laces. All the way at the bottom you can tie a bow and I usually tuck away the leftover laces under my modesty panel. You can now use the loops at the waist to tighten the laces. Once you feel like your whole bodice is laced up tight and well, you can tie a bow into these loops. That was it for this video about how I make bone bodices with invisible boning channels. I hope this was somewhat helpful to you. In the future I also definitely want to make a video on how I make bone bodices with the boning channel stitched into the bodice rather than invisible ones. So if you want to see that make sure you subscribe to my channel if that's something you would want. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. It means a lot to me.